Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I want to show you an idea of taking what is normally an eight and a half by eleven printed page and turning it into a junk journal cover. So let's get started. What I've done is I went into the out you know under the sea. I've got out to the sea, out to sea. This is under the sea. Under the sea creative kit. This is from the large journal kit. It's a digital download or you can get it as a physical kit. But what I did was the digital kit is I pulled this image into my photo editing software and because there's no text I also did a mirror image. So as you can see they're identical. What I did next was I used some tulip dimensional fabric glitter paint this one's called Crystal Sparkles. Sometimes I get it at Hobby Lobby. You can also get it on Amazon. I'll have it in my description box. I use it like a lot of people use stickles. And I apply mine with a paintbrush so you can get this beautiful shimmer. The next thing I'm going to do is take both of these and put them back to back. Again, these are 8.5 by 11 pieces. And I printed them on linen cardstock. Now I'm grabbing some paper clips. And I just want to hold these pieces together because I want to do something creative with my cover. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start at one side. These are lined up back to back so they match. And I am going to rip this upper portion away from the bottom. And I'm using my fingers to help guide it so it doesn't rip where I don't want it to. So it's not perfect but I got both sides done. I'll set that aside for a moment. Now what I want to do is I want to fussy cut these whales and dolphins out. So I'll just take my Fisker scissors and fussy cut these out real fast. Now that I have these fussy cut out, I will take some distress ink and go around the edges of the little sea life as well as the edges of my torn bottom hash of the page. While I have these pieces lined up together, I want to fold them in half real fast just so I know where my center mark is. And I'll just kind of add a little bit of distress ink just to kind of help indicate where that fold is. It won't be seen later. It's there so when I go to cut, I can find that center. Take the paper clips off. Set this aside. And I'm going to use something completely different that you probably have not seen used before. I have some of this... Christmas extra wide ribbon that has this glitter mesh like stuff. Um, I thought it might be kind of fun to use this for making my journal and I, I didn't check this before I started. So let me grab a piece of paper. I may have to piece it together. So let me see here if I get it right. I'm lining it up with another book page or another page and then I'm going to line this up on top. And so I made this a little bit shorter than it should be, but I want to go ahead and bring it down to where it's even here. And I think what I'll do is just cut it. So I'm just use my rotary cutter. And I happen to have another scrap. So I'm just going to kind of lay it up at the top. I'm going to put some other layers on this so don't get hung up on the piecing together. I'm just piecing it together temporarily. So what I'm going to do now is I'll grab some Fabra tack, get it to come down to the bottom here and I want to put some glue right on this edge and then paste that down into place and then I'm going to take this other piece and glue it on the other side. So I'm sandwiching this glitter fabric between the two pieces of paper. And I think what I'm going to do is move this out of the way and then just put a little bit of glue. All right, so I just put a little bit of glue all the way across the top here. 
kind of comes together. So now I have that piece laid out and you kind of see the glittery pieces there. And then I have some cheesecloth. And what I did was I took some Tattered Angels Glimmer Mist from the Under the Sea collection. And I sprayed a piece of the cheesecloth until I got the coloring and the design that I liked. And now what I'm going to do is lay this on top of this glittery fabric, which will help wherever I had maybe a spot that wasn't quite uh, reaching down here at the bottom. I like this because it's thin, and so it's not going to be super bulky in my journal cover. All right, so I'll just trim this side off. I'll leave a little bit more glue, and just kind of make a dot in a couple of places to just help hold it in place. The cheesecloth kind of tones down that gold a little bit. So now I'm just going to flip this over and I've got another piece of cheesecloth to put on the other side, which will be basically the inside and the outside. So I'll do the same thing. I'll put a few drops of glue to kind of help hold it together. So now I want to decide which is going to be my front and which is going to be my back. And I think... Yeah, I think I want this to be my front. So I'm going to look at my whale image and I'm going to line it up with the edge. Now I do plan to put something around this outside edge so I don't have to go perfectly up against the corner. So I'm going to take a little bit of glue. I'm using the fabric tag because I'm using this plasticky trim and I want things to stick together and sometimes if you use a leans it doesn't quite stick quick. So I want to come right to the edge here. I want to come down a little bit and paste that into place. And I'm lifting it up off my desk so it doesn't stick to it. <laughs> Alright so I'm going to save this to go on the other side and then I've got a couple of these dolphin so I think I want, do I want the little one up here? What I also need to keep in mind is where the middle is. So here is the middle portion. Let me grab a ruler. So I don't want my dolphin here to go too far. But I think right about there would be a good spot for him. So I'm going to put a little glue on the back side of him. And I have way too much glue. But we'll put that there. And then I have this one, and I think, let's put him kind of in the middle here. So now what I want to do is flip this over and line up the images on the other side. That is why I mirrored the images so that I could line them up. And when you look on the inside of the journal, you see the same thing on both sides. Kind of see how that's coming together. All right, so I need to grab some sequins. I happen to have some of these shell sequins. And I thought they might look kind of neat scattered in between a little bit. I don't know. We'll see. If I kind of add a couple. It may be hard to see, but I kind of like the idea of having the different shell pieces here and there. So I'm going to add a few on either side, again using the Fabri-Tac. All right, flip it over and let's add some to the other side. I'm lifting it up so I can see where the sequin was laid on the other side so it kind of matches. I think I have all the sequins I want to add, so I'm going to clean off my desk here. I want to laminate this, so I have out my heat laminator, and I've got a laminate sheet that is a clamshell, and it opens up. So now what I want to do is take this piece and center it in the lamination pouch. My pouches are nine by 11 and a half, I think, in size. 
So what I'm doing is kind of centering it in the laminate from top to bottom and left to right. I want it even all the way around. And I'll put it in my laminator pouch and we're gonna run it through the laminator. I have a commercial grade laminator. This used to belong to my father-in-law when he had a business that they laminated cards to give to all of their customers. And when he sold the business, he did not sell this. And I had used it a few times. So he asked me if I wanted it. And I said, sure. So it's come in really handy for my craft stuff. And what I'll do is I'll check it. And if it looks like it's done, I'll finish. But it looks like it got a little wonky on me, but that's okay. We'll fix it. And I'm going to go ahead and run it through one more time. And then I'll clean off my desk. All right, that looks pretty good. So we're gonna let that cool for a moment and then I will clean off my desk. Well, there's my laminated piece. So now I need to cut it. So I'm grabbing my paper trimmer here and it is a little crooked, but I think, I think I can go ahead and cut this the way I want. So I'm gonna come into the five and a half inch mark Kind of straighten it just a little bit. So now I have two pieces for my front and back cover of my journal. Get rid of my paper trimmer. All right, so for the next portion, I want to cover this outside edge. I also need to pick a spine because I want this to be a thicker journal, more than one signature. And it is a little flimsy, but I'm gonna try to sturdy it up with the next layer. So let me grab some paper and I'll be right back. All right, so I have a couple pieces of some cardstock that I wanna use for the spine. And what I'm going to do is take my cardstock that is nine inches tall and come over about three quarters of an inch and score this. And then I want this to have a one and a half inch spine. So I kind of fold it just to help guide. This piece of paper was three inches wide by nine inches. And then I'm just gonna score on the other side, which looks like I did it pretty much at three quarters of an inch on each side. So I'm just gonna do that to the second piece. Now, if you don't have cardstock, use some old junk mail. This isn't going to be seen. I was just using what I have in my stash. All right, so now what I wanna do is take these pieces and glue them to my cover. And I think I'm gonna do it a little bit differently than I did my first cover that I made. I've made a sample. All right, so I wanna make sure I got these going in the right direction. So I'll fold these. This is going to be the outside of my cover. So I'm going to lay this down. And I think what I want to do is do the inside first. So what I want to do is line this up on my cutting mat. One, two, three, four, five, and get it close to the six inch mark by following the fold and my spine here and I'll grab my fabric tack again because this is plastic and I want to glue right down this edge. I'm not worried if it's not perfect. I am going to sew over this in a moment and I'll do this side the same way. Then I'll take the second piece and score it and I'll glue it directly on top of the other piece. All right, so I'm gonna set this aside for a moment because what I wanna do next is I have some paper sack that I've torn and I want to stamp it and decorate it to go all the way around this outside edge. So let me set this out of the way. So I pretty much took a piece of the paper sack and just ripped it. It's a little over an inch wide and I wanted that jagged edge on both sides. So now I've got from the coral stamp set. I'm trying to decide which way I want to do this and I think I want it to look like that. 
So I just stamped the coral. So this is one of the seaweed stamps. And I'm just going to stamp it in the middle, kind of filling in. Put that aside. Do that one more time on another strip. All right, so I've stamped those. So now let's add some Distress inks to the strips. All right, so now what I want to do is take these strips, and I've already folded them so that it was easier for me to put them on here. I'm going to get up on this edge and line it up. And do you see how that's just going to cover the edge? So I'll use the Fabri-Tac glue again because we're dealing with plastic. And it'll cover up that blank area in the laminate. I couldn't get my words out. <laughs> and I'll just cut off the excess here, flip it over, and glue the other side. See how that's coming together? All right, I'll do this edge same way. All right, so I got that piece on there. And I don't know if I have enough to do that. I do. Okay, good. I'm just going to do the entire length on the top and the bottom the same way. All right, so there is my outside edge all the way around, and I will score it again just to make sure or fold it on the score lines. It looks like I need a little bit of glue right here, but I think I'm okay. I'm going to sew. I've got a strip of fabric here, so I want to cut it to be the width of this, which is three inches. So I'm going to cut this at three inches wide. This is a piece of denim that was a pair of my husband's jeans that fell apart, holes in them, whatnot. And so I took it and cut it up, and it's become a great addition to my junk journals. All right, so we've got that piece. So we're going to line that up in the middle here and glue this down over that blue cardstock. See how it just transforms the way that looks? I'm trying to decide if I want to cover the blue up in the middle. You're not really going to see it other than right in the inside cover. I probably should have applied some Distress inks, and I think I'll do that right now. I could add another piece of fabric down the middle, and I happen to have a little strip of this paper left. I think that's what I'll do. I'll cut this in half, glue it down, and then glue that fabric, and it'll just kind of give it a whole covered look in the middle. So if I put that here, put this over here, you'll see a little bit of the blue, but it'll cover it up for the most part. And then I'll just put that in the middle. All right, we're going to give this a moment for the glue to dry, and then let's go over to the sewing machine. And what my plan is, I will stitch down this side and this side, and then I will go all the way around. And before I sew it, I'm going to think about it for a moment. I may go ahead and grab some fabric to make a tie. So let me grab a few things, see what I want to use, and then we'll sew in just a moment. Okay, so I found a couple pieces of fabric. So what I want to do is find the center of my journal cover. So I'm just lining it up on my mat. One, two, three, four, five, right here in the middle. And I think what I want to do is lay this on top here. And I happen to have a little scrap of denim as well. And I just thought that would be kind of cute to put that over the top of it. So I'm going to glue those in place. Flip that around and do it on the other side as well. All right, so let's go over to the sewing machine, and I will stitch down the middle, which will give the sides a time to dry before I stitch down those. I have a regular sewing machine, regular needle. I have it set on a zigzag stitch. I do recommend that you use new thread and that you let the glue dry before you sew. <laughs> All right, so let's get started here. 
We're just going to line it up with this edge and stitch down. And then what I like to do is just start along one edge and sew all the way down. And then when I get to the end, I leave my needle down and raise the presser foot and rotate it around. All right, so there is the cover sewn. And I will train it just a little bit by bending it. And then this can be tied. I like the way it came together. I will be using this in the live on June the 6th at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. So I may come back and show a flip through of the journal as a part of this video. Or I may make it a second, separate video because this one is pretty long. <laughs> but I hope you like the way this came together. I hope that maybe it gives you an idea of using your covers a little bit differently that comes in the kits or that you may have around your stash that you can put together and use some creative materials inside the cover. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. Check the description box below for links to the products that I use as well as my social media connectors, including my Facebook groups, Friendly Junk Journal People, as well as by Linda Israel. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. And if you would, tell me what you thought of this project. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. We'll take care. Have a fabulous day. We'll see you next time. Bye.